Good morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. If you've, you have been on my page for the first time, once in a while, I have dreams and I come on my platforms and I share what um, I've dreamt about. So, call everyone, as many as you know, we need to pray. You are the living God. There's no one like you. Thank you so much. Join in, join in, join in. I don't know why Facebook is not saying if people are watching. But... The living God. Is there no one like you? Eku eme, Eku eme, You are the living God. Oh. Is there no one like you? You are my healer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Lilian Mutambo. Um, I'm based in the UK, and um, I'm Zambian. And once in a while, I come on my platform when I have dreams. I share the dream I've had, and we pray over this dream. And I thought it wise for me to come to my platform again to share. Um, I started having dreams in 2011. 2011, 2012. And by then I wasn't really a person that shares dreams. I, when I have a dream, I would just, you know, come um, tell my family, tell this one, tell that one. And I forget about it. I dreamt about this and I forget about it. So in 2012, I dreamt about my dad. I'm waiting for people to come. In 2012, I dreamt about my dad dying. My dad was fine. Everything was okay. I dreamt we attended a funeral. And I was just asking myself, I've come to Zambia, you know. I'm expecting to see my dad. Why is everyone wearing black? And my, my mother told me in my dream that my father was no more. And I started crying in my dream. I say, Dad, why did you miss my graduation? Why did my father miss my graduation? I woke up in heavy tears. In heavy tears, and I was crying. I, said, ah. I called home, Zambia. I said, Mommy, where is that? Where is that? And my mom said, um, my dad was fine. There was nothing wrong with him. I said, ah, are you sure? That was 2012. A few weeks later, my dad was being ill. And by 2013, January 16th, my father died. And that's when I joined a church in London where I would pray. And it made me realize that so many things that I used to dream about, I would ignore because I would think, ah, it's just a dream, you know, I would ignore. But through those dreams, it's also a communication with um, my maker, He's trying to say something. Pray about this. Pray about that. Somebody's saying there's no volume. Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Um, if you can hear me, let me know. We'll pray about this. We'll pray about that. So in 2015, in 2015, I dreamt about President Haka in the Hichilema. He was not even the strongest candidate. But I dreamt we met in a football pitch somewhere, like in a ground near a gravel road. There was a big bus, very big bus, a white one. And he was holding a jacket. He was wearing a suit, a, a nice uh, white shirt and a black trousers. And a very nice shoe. And he was holding his jacket. And he said, hi, Lily. I said, oh, how do you know my name? And by then, I never used to use Lily. I used to use 
First Lady Lillian Mutambo on my Facebook. So I said, how do you know me? He said, who doesn't know Lily? Lily is huge in Zambia. I had no followers on Facebook. <laughs> I didn't even know who, how he looked like, but in my dream, I saw him. I had to Google to see how does Hanka Inde Ichilema look like. And then when I saw him, in that dream, he was telling me, come to my office, we should work together. In my dream, he was the president of Zambia. And I called my friends, Malachi, his, uh, Prophet Malachi, I called Herbert, and I told him, I, I dreamt President Akende Ichilema was the president of Zambia. And then I started looking for um, UPND uh, groups, wherever. I said, I need to join his party. He will be the president of Zambia. Fast forward in 2021, 20, 2021, I think, earlier, there's a video on my Facebook page, and I dreamt of the plans they had against him. And I said in my video, I said, he will be the president of Zambia. Now, I came to my page and we prayed because I saw they were planning to take him out. You know? Somebody saying I'm not clear, but I'm using Wi-Fi. Oh. They were planning, maybe it's your signal, to take him out. And I came on this platform and we prayed. We prayed. In fact, I woke up in heavy tears because I dreamt we attended a funeral. And we prayed, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed. And people were laughing. You know, people were laughing. People were laughing. They were saying, oh, she's just looking for an adoption. Oh, she's just looking for... A way to get favor. I said, no. I said, look, even though I've never met the president, I've never met, I've never, I've never even met him. I've never met the president. Even though that's why you've never seen a picture of me and the president. Even though I've never met this man, I now understand that my assignment is to pray for him. You understand? Is to pray for him. Um, I'm audible enough? Okay. So we can start now. As I was sleeping, I had a dream. You are the living God. Is there no one like you? Nigerians need to pray. Nigeria needs to pray for its country. Is there no one like you? I had a dream. There's a movement of rebels planning evil against Nigeria. Suddenly, many Nigerians are leaving the country. There's a rush of Nigerians leaving Nigeria because they're not happy with what is happening in Nigeria. So what they did was they put people on an assignment who looked like they were traveling as well. They put people on an assignment who looked like they were traveling as well. And it was a trap. These people were traveling to the airport on their way, UK, US, Canada, you name it. And they were on a big bus. On a big bus that was taking them to the airport for them to board a plane. And among them was a well-known celebrity, a very well-known celebrity that has been involved in so much controversy. She's female. And she was there planning to leave the country with her son.
and I'll mention her name, Tonto DK. She was planning to leave the country for a better life for her son. And as they were going, these people set up trap and they captivated these Nigerians, collected their passports, collected their green cards, biometric cards, and held them captive. And they said, you will not travel away from this country. So the whole intention of them kidnapping these people was to send a message that Nigerian government will stop Nigerians from traveling abroad for greener pastures. And they were held in this center and we had to find ways to take some food to them. And I saw Tonto Dike seated wearing a cute little black dress like a fairy, you know those dresses that people wear, um, ballerina kind of. And she was like on a, what do you call that for kids, you know, like a bouncing like, and she was rocking. And she was just, you know, in her own world, she was just rocking. And there were so many people, so many of them that were kidnapped. And one of the people had like a PhD and was on an assignment to travel abroad with his wife. And they demonstrated by taking him out. They beheaded him. And they said, if anyone speaks or says anything, we will do the same. That was a dream I had. And we're trying to find ways and means of how can these people be let out? It was a difficult assignment. It was a very, very difficult assignment. And I began reflecting whilst in the dream to say, okay, why is this happening? These people have been sent by top people to stop Nigerians from traveling abroad. And what they, what they were saying is, you cannot travel abroad and leave us in problems here. You are staying here. That is how they were kept in that hostage. It was difficult. Money they did not even want. All they wanted is to collect passports, your documents, and stop. So my reflection on this is, as you travel to the airports, be careful. The Nigerian government should tighten security among themselves, the airports, they should make sure they put security as people are going across the Abuja airport, Kaduna, they are going to Lagos airport, they need to put tight security. Whatever vehicle is going in, they must check and search because these men were armed. It was not a joke. I will not come to my platform to share a dream that I did not see. That is not scary. But this one, the whole, the whole Africa was affected because we are looking at people with children who have planned they are going abroad for greener pastures. And then suddenly you see someone stopping your destiny. You see someone saying, we are going to captivate these people. They targeted people traveling abroad for greener pastures. 
So Nigerians, you must be careful in your country. You must be careful. Many people are taken by, you know, the prosperity kind of preaching and the assignment of them being leaders in, in, in the country is for them to share messages, to see what God is saying about their country. And for me, I am found among Nigerians. My, most of my employees are Nigerians. And even most of the times they share, you know, their concerns, what's going on, and we pray about these things. But this particular one, as I woke up, I said, let me call Elenis. Elenis is one girl when I have any, you know, vision, dream about Nigeria or anything I want to share. I said, Elenis, this is what I'm seeing about your country. So we need to pray for Nigeria. And this morning we want to pray for those kidnappers. It was not a joke. It was not a joke. Imagine you are living a country where you think, ah, you think, I have no opportunities here. I have no job. I'm going for greener pastures. And then somebody stops you by kidnapping you. Children, women, they were just crying. They were just crying. They were weeping. They were weeping. And we pray this morning that every assignment against any Nigerian that is planning to travel abroad, any bus, any taxi, any means of transport that they are using to go to the airport, whatever plan that they have, we pray that we cancel this in the mighty name of Jesus. It is not easy for someone to get a visa to travel abroad, let alone to acquire money to say, I'm traveling. Remember, these people might have sold all their goods, gotten loans to say, I'm going for greener pastures with my family. And as you, you are traveling, say, I'm going. Somebody comes and collects your passport, collects your documents and behaves someone to demonstrate that they are serious. This was a top order by top, top people. It's not a joke. Nobody, nobody could stop them. They tried negotiating. Let them go. They are going on a flight. Let them go. They say, no, they're not going anywhere. They are staying here in Nigeria. It was, it was very, very tough. So we need to continue praying for Nigeria. We need to continue praying as Africans. Because most of the times, Africans, you are so quick to, you know, you're lazy when it comes to the gospel. You don't read the Bible for yourselves. You just want to go to one online you know, ministry, if somebody is saying something, maybe they post something, you say, man, you want to go to a church where it's happening, it's happening. You want to go to a church where they dress good, forgetting that salvation is personal. You don't need to gather in order for you to hear from God, to see things happening, for miracles to take place. But imagine I am here in the UK and then I dream about this thing. Mind you, I don't even watch such type of content. But when I saw this in my dream, I said, ah, I woke up and I came for my live stream. Many of you uh, may take this as a joke. I don't care. You understand? You can take this as a joke. You can take it as, oh, it's just one of those things. What, what happens is when God reveals and is in order for us to be redeemed. So if somebody is planning this against Nigeria, God is saying in our dreams, I'm showing you what they are planning. Pray about it. 
pray about it. Last week, we saw some gunmen going into a church and killing priests, killing the priests, killing people who gathered to pray. What about somebody who's going to the airport to sit there to say, I'm going to, to a country? That's an easy thing, you understand, for them. So we need to pray. Always be fearful. Always look at your life as somebody who is a vessel of God. You don't need somebody else. God can use you. That is why many of them, they are taking advantage of you by saying, sow a seed. Sow this seed. Sow this seed. Sow this seed. I would rather give you my seed because it, I feel more blessed to give you my seed. I feel more blessed to give you my seed than to receive anything. I've never received anything in my entire life. You understand? That is why they're taking advantage of you. They come on media. And even all these mega, mega churches from Nigeria, some of them don't have time to talk about what is happening in their country because they are directly involved with politicians. They are the ones who are oppressing Nigerians by telling them, vote for this one. They do it in their churches. They campaign clearly in their churches. You understand? And for the elections next year in Nigeria, it won't be an easy task. Nigerians need to pray as well. Somebody saying, I'm only dreaming about politics. What about Pamela? When I came on Facebook and I posted RIP Pamela, what did you people say? What did you people say? There was, there is a darkness. She's gone. And she'll never be found. She's gone. And so my place to tell you that faith is gone as well. So what I'm trying to say here is when we have to pray for nations, it also affects you. You may not be in the country. You may not be in the country. You may not be from that country. But believe you me, as somebody who is concerned about the whole continent, you should be worried. Because what affects our neighbor affects us. And this is what um, Christianity has breathed these days. If you belong to this person, this is my father, this is my church, the rest, they are rubbish. They don't even listen to anything else. You understand? But when I come here and I say, this one, this is what God is saying, let's pray for this country, let's pray. Let's pray. Somebody is saying, um, you are praying, instead of praying for Zambia, where were you when I dreamed about Haka in the Lema? The video is on my page. You were not there. <laughs> I prayed about uh, Zambia. And sometimes, most of the times when we come on this page and we say, let's pray. When we come on this page and we say, uh, what is happening in Zambia? Girls are undressing. It's not good. You come and tell me it's their life. So, Enjoy the immorality spirit that has been spread in Zambia. You heard a few days ago a celebrity saying prostitution is a job. You heard it. That is why they are going naked on social media. What else should I tell you? When I came on this page to tell you what the Zambian girls are doing going naked is wrong, you said I'm jealous. They have beautiful bodies. They have no ch uh, children. You started mocking me, you started saying all sorts of things. So enjoy. And for a fact that the government has not said anything, they are enjoying it as well. <laughs> and people say, no, the, the police is not their duty. You, you ban the religious affairs? The religious affairs was there in Zambia. It was re removed. So the religious affairs is not there. So deal with it. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy 
yourselves. I, there's nothing for me to say. I've said this before. Many things that are happening on social media. Zambia News, that's why we have thieves. We have prophetesses, thieves, coming on social media to lie to you. Because you are gullible. You don't read your Bible. Because you want to get things free of charge. You are waiting for government to help you. So what happens? Somebody comes and says, type iPhone. You will get it. Connect. Amen. You also type amen. You are gullible. So what's there to tell you? You understand? Tomorrow you'll be there. When you hear there's a meeting, you'll be there. And yet what you don't know is they're stealing your destiny. They are stealing your glory. You should be the one to shine. You are a star. And what these people normally do is, these false prophets, what they do, they attract you with their goodness. They look good. They are beautiful. So you are attracted to that. And when you go there, they steal your star. They will be doing well and you are not. You will be poorer, poorer. And because you cannot say it, you are already a follower. You, you have this hope. That things will change. They will never change. God cannot share his glory. You understand? That is why when somebody is false, we will talk about it. Because you cannot put an image, idolize someone, and say, eh, eh, this is a, a man or woman of God. And you put them as your profile picture. That's the beginning of cultism as well. You are idolizing this person. It's okay to celebrate someone. Oh, Thank you so much, man of God, woman of God. We love you. But when you start idolizing and you can even insult people because of that person, you are worshiping that person unknowingly. You are hypnotized. And very soon, many of you will realize when it's too late, when you've wasted years going to the ministry, when you've given your tithe in the wrong ground when you've given your offerings, your seeds, hoping that things will change. Things won't change. What they are after is your money. What they are after is them to be glorified because that's the assignment. And right now there's a huge assignment on Southern Africa. That's the assignment because you're gullible. You're not to read your Bible. There is a, a, a great man of God, Bishop um, Eda Hossa, before he died, he said, Zambia doesn't need prophets. Zambia is a place where we have preachers. We have prophets in Zambia. I have this man of God I know in Zambia. He sees things. He's not a celebrity. He's not known. But if he tells you this is what will happen, this is what will happen, Exactly like that. You understand? Those ones that are coming to say this and this, they want to go and collect power somewhere from the great prophet of Africa, Nana Kweku Bonsam. Nana Kweku Bonsam will be live on this platform in a few days' time when he's available to share how he gives those people powers. Maybe if you hear it from him, you will believe. Because you think we're just talking... Because we are jealous. Nobody is jealous about anyone. At the end of the day, it's you that will fall in a pit of hell. You understand? So what am I trying to say? We need to be fearful and prayerful by ourselves without relying on anybody. And then secondly, we need to open our eyes. Let's not just follow anything or anyone because the person has said, God, Jesus. That's why they don't even know the real Bible. 